Okay, good morning and welcome to the True Potential Monthly Performance Monitor for August. So today I'm actually do things a little bit differently. I'm gonna analyze markets as before, but then I'm gonna concentrate on one key theme and that is interest rates and how do changes in interest rates affect your investment. Okay, but first let's have a look at the returns as normal. And as you can see, both equities and bonds have given you good returns over the month of August. And that's continuing on from the past couple of months. UK equities have performed very well, but actually the best performer has been emerging market equities. And that's because investors have been rotating out of the developed markets into the emerging markets. And that's because a lot of investors feel that developed markets are on quite rich valuations at the moment. And lastly, if we take a look at commodities, you can see they perform very well. If you look at the gold price year to date, that's up nearly 30%. Okay, so let's move on. Let's concentrate on interest rates. And as I'm sure you all will have seen during August, the Bank of England reduced the UK interest rate by a quarter of a percent. So what does that mean for your investments? And actually, you shouldn't just look at interest rates on their own. You should look at other things. So what economists are saying and what they're saying at the moment is that the Bank of England are going to start to buy bonds. And what does that mean for investors? If the Bank of England starts to buy bonds, then the price will go up, yields will go down, and what that means is that bonds become less attractive to investors, and it encourages investors to look towards the riskier asset classes such as equities. So what happens if you're an investor and you're not sure what to do and you don't necessarily want to take risk? That can be quite a difficult position to be in. I mean, if we think of low risk assets, think of things such as cash savings accounts, cash ICEs, they offer virtually no return at all. To gain a decent return currently in our low, this low interest rate environment, an investor will need to take some risk. So how can you do that? Here at True Potential, we offer our True Potential portfolios. These portfolios are available in every different risk category, from defensive right the way up to aggressive. So that means that an investor can invest into a portfolio that suits the risk level that they're looking to take. As well as that, investors need to be flexible. And that means don't just invest all of your money into one area spread your money into different countries, into different asset classes. This is what we call diversification. And here at True Potential, we can offer a new higher level of diversification, which is called advanced diversification. And that is diversifying your risk, not just across country, not just across asset class, but now by fund manager style. So reducing risk down even further for the investor. The True Potential Portfolios, formerly known as our Managed Portfolio Series, now has over 1 billion invested since October 2015 when we launched. We would just like to take this opportunity to thank you all for your ongoing support. Looking at the performance figures, we are particularly pleased with the results with strong positive numbers from across all our portfolios from defensive through to aggressive. Performance since launch is also showing double digit figures um, for those portfolios with increasing levels of risk from balance through to growth and aggressive. Um, you could say that investors that have taken on higher levels of risk have been rewarded during this period of uncertainty. However, what we do is not just about performance. One of the key areas that we look at is risk. Both True Potential and our fund manager partners that we have for our wealth strategy fund range are also very aware of risk levels within the funds and portfolios. What we offer is a good risk adjusted return and what we mean by this is maximising returns for a given level of risk. We will not take more risk than is necessary and certainly no more risk that could push an investor out of, out of their risk category. Every month, we speak to our fund manager partners to ascertain what the key short-term themes are, and then we examine ways whereby we can tilt our portfolios towards these themes. For August, um, looking across the asset classes, our fund managers um, have views that are similar, 
and there are areas where their views differ. The ultra low yields on sovereign bonds are causing our fund managers to coalesce around a view that they are not consistent with current economic fundamentals that have been improving. They are also like-minded in their thinking that the credit cycle is deteriorating, but not in a serious way. For income managers, it makes sense for them to hunt around for yield in corporate debt and overseas debt markets, whilst being cognizant of liquidity requirements should there be a reason for them to sell. Manager views across equities are divergent. Our managers like the US, but are not so keen on high stock market valuations. Our managers are distrustful of Europe, but find their stock market valuations a lot more attractive. Japan divides opinion, with some fund managers believing um, that central bank support is not effective and others believing that the Bank of Japan can really drive returns. Over the month, we have made changes to all portfolios, with the main change being the addition of the new True Potential UBS Well Strategy Fund range. We believe that adding UBS to the portfolios will allow us to differentiate across style and allow us to manage the portfolios optimally on cost, long-term expected return and risk-adjusted return. Changes to the Cautious Income Fund this month reflect a need to rebalance to optimise on risk. Every month we aim to optimise on as many factors as possible and risk is a key element in the mix. So in this context, what we've done is we have reduced down our holding in the True Potential Threadneedle Monthly Income Fund and also our holding in the Close Brothers Cautious Income Fund and reinvested the proceedings back into the Schroeder's Cautious Income Fund. For the Balanced Income Portfolio, what we have done is we have reduced down our position in the True Potential Threadneedle Monthly Income Fund and reinvested this back into the True Potential Schroeder's Cautious Income Fund. The position in the Schroeder's Fund has been increased, taking the view that this fund accesses fixed interest using specialist fund managers and the fund's high level of manager diversification should help um, guide the portfolios through all market conditions. Okay, so let's now look at our true potential strategy and wealth strategy fund range. And before I do that, I'd just like to say that we're incredibly pleased to have launched a new true potential fund and that's in partnership with UBS. These funds are low cost, they're innovative, and they're from one of the most respected wealth managers in the world right now. So next time I'll be able to give you an update on their investment outlook and exactly what's been happening within their funds. Okay, so let's move on to our funds right now. I'm going to start off with Schroeder's. So the main change to the Schroeder fund range is that they've been increasing their weighting into commodities. And they've been doing that by buying gold equities through BlackRock Gold in general. So Schroeder's, they're very much cognizant of what's been happening with the gold price. Obviously, the gold price has had an extremely good run. However, it's very, very far away from its 2011 high. Schroeder's looking at income, they are quite nervous around valuations in bond markets. You know, they do feel that bond markets are overvalued at the moment. Uh, and they're now looking to more sort of non-traditional areas of income investment. And that's things such as US high yield and emerging market debt. So let's move on to SCI. Although SCI do feel that equity valuations look rich, particularly within higher quality stocks, they still feel that there are a lot of opportunities out there. SCI feel that governments will be very accommodating when it comes to interest rates, and they won't let interest rate rise until they feel that growth is stable enough to withstand that rise. If a correction were to happen, SCI feel that their global managed volatility product and also their short duration product would help protect return. Okay, so let's move on to Close Brothers. Close feel that certain sectors within developed market equities, such as telecoms and utilities, are now looking overvalued. And you will see secular rotation. They're positive on healthcare, seeing more M&A within the sector, so more corporate activity within the sector. Looking at income, Close have benefited from a more diverse asset exposure, 
with the infrastructure funds performing particularly well. Okay, so let's move on to Goldman Sachs. I'm going to start off with the Goldman Sachs Dynamic Fund. Looking at the economic and technical indicators that Goldman Sachs look at, they're seeing that they're positive, but they're not substantial. So for equities, both the economic and technical indicators, they are very positive in, in one way, but not strong enough for Goldman Sachs to look to make changes. Looking at the positioning, they're very overweight relative value, and that's been quite positive to performance within the portfolio. If we move on, if we look on at Income Builder next, uh, Income Builder's yielding around about 4.3%. That yields paid monthly. It's a very high level of income. Duration is short for the portfolio, and that's because they're nervous, nervous around interest rate risk. And Goldman Sachs feel that they offer more of a concentrated security selection compared to other funds. So that means that they have the ability to potentially avoid dividend cuts that funds that buy more of the market will end up receiving. Okay, so next let's move on to Threadneedle. So Threadneedle, normally the asset allocation is around 80% UK equities, 20% bonds. That's actually moved slightly, so it's now around about 74% equities, 22% bonds and the excess in cash. And the reason why that's happened, it's not a position change by Threadneedle, it's because bond markets have seen such incredible performance. Threadneedle are looking to move that back to the 80-20 asset allocation spread, and they're doing that as money comes in. Starting off with UK equities, they're topping up on names that they already hold, but they're not looking towards any new names at the moment. So they're just looking for any falls in markets to top up holdings. Looking at dividend growth, Threadneedle are hoping for around about 3% dividend growth this year. Okay. So next, let's move on to 7IM. So 7IM have been tactically adjusting their portfolios, switching out of an overweight position in European equities and increasing US equities, moving equity positions to growth areas away from Europe and away from any sort of potential Brexit problems that we might see within Europe. In addition, they've been cutting their foreign currency exposure, closing out the US dollar and yen positions following strong rallies post-Brexit. Lastly, we have Allianz, and over the summer, with volatility falling, Allianz have been overweight equity. However, they now believe that volatility could spike upwards. Therefore, they've been reducing down their overall equity position. Separately to this, Allianz believe that the emerging market indicators look weak, Therefore, they've reduced down their positioning within this area. Okay, so that's everything for me. I'd like to thank you all for listening, and I will see you next month. Thank you.